We are interested in real-world applications, so it's very important to understand what are the challenges that we're going to face, what should we be careful about, what are the limitations of 3D deep learning models. Let's just explore in a synthetic way what I compiled for you here. So basically, whenever we have a real-world deep learning workflow, we'll have always three main big phases, which will be data preparation, so real-world data, annotation and pre-processing augmentation, model building, and then inference and analysis, okay? Knowing that, I put here eight main challenges that we are going to face. There is no specific order in these challenges, I just ordered them in a logical way following the, 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 the workflow. But let's get started. So the first challenge is 3D data acquisition. Basically, at this stage, it's very important to understand where the data comes from, especially whenever you try building the architecture so that you're sure that it will be tuned to your application. Remember here, we will be in a narrow application of deep learning, being very specialized, high performing on specific real world applications. In that case, you have different sensors, for example, LiDAR sensors, so active sensors, passive sensors, you have different platforms, which could be mobile or static, and you have also different methods of acquisition, which makes the, the process of gathering data not so straightforward, and it's good to frame how the data was gathered before using it. Then the second element is 3D data pre-processing. Before pushing a dataset into an architecture, there is almost always a need for pre-processing the data to making sure that it will work. It can be as simple as just translating, rotating the point cloud data, or normalizing to a specific range, or to tiling and sampling to be sure that you have always the same amount of points that will pass through the network. Those are examples of pre-processing of point cloud data or 3D data in general for 3D deep learning application. That's a stage that poses some challenges about which pre-processing should we do, how should we do that. The third challenge is 3D data augmentation. Usually, we will not have sufficient number of annotated data sets, which means that to be sure that we encompass the full range of uh, variation within a application, it's needed to do some augmentation, which could be noise injection data synthesis or stuff that will make rotations on your data, translation scaling, all to extend the, the, the possible configuration of your data sets, for example. Then the fourth challenge would be deep learning model building. Here's that's the biggest one, because first we will need to define which learning paradigm we will choose, with which learning mechanism. Then after we will have to choose a specific task, and then after we will have to choose a specific method to achieve the tasks that we want and then we need to make sure that we define the training, uh, the inference and how we generalize with the right proportions to, to be able to perform. And that means also monitoring the performance and making sure that, that, that we get the highest performance possible. That is the biggest challenge. Then we have the fifth challenge which is computational resources. That is a massive one as well. We are playing with massive data sets with deep learning and that's a bit what will trigger our need to go into deep learning rather than classical machine learning right we will need massive data set whereas if you have a very small data set usually machine learning performs better if you are um, getting not the intersection of a union and just the top one right so this is a first challenge then there is another one which is computational resources at your disposal we deal with extremely complex tasks, right? So it's a lot of operations, successive operations that we need to do in the most efficient manner. And usually training deep learning model on the CPU only is not recommended for production ready applications. However, inference on CPU is a, a whole other matter. But for training, we will need to be or take care of making sure that our computation execute on the GPU, which is much more uh, performance oriented or a tensor processing unit, TPU, GPU for graphical processing unit. All right. Another thing or two other things that means that we need also to move some time to cloud computing or parallel computing. And if you are on the GPU with CUDA, we will deal with that a bit later on. But that means usually you, you have all your parallel computing handled for you. That's why it's much more efficient using all the CUDA core at your disposal. All right. The sixth challenge is a big one is the lack of annotated data set. What does that mean? You know, to be able to train a deep learning model in a supervised fashion, usually you need data enabled, which means that 
you ha you need both data enables for one modality, for example, and this is not easy. In the scope of 3D Point Cloud, there are not a lot of annotated 3D Point Cloud with both data enable, and it's even harder to get that for specific application. Let me take an example that is very speaking for itself. I used to work uh, with my colleague Jean-Jacques in cultural heritage, and of course there, having a point cloud that you gather on site will mean that usually you will not find another specimen of this specific object. So you need to, to give another layer of abstraction about an encompassing class that you want to classify your point cloud onto. And this is extended to all applications, finding enough objects per class for annotating in, in, in the scope of having a semantic segmentation or in saying segmentation workflow, it's usually boils down to having a lot of data, which is not really possible. So that is a big problem. Same goes for 3D mesh, for 3D voxel, and especially having multi-model uh, data set, which are nicely annotated. There is a big saying, garbage in, garbage out. You always need to make sure that when you wanna push something in a production ready environment, you need to make sure what you train on is super top-notch uh, labeled data. Usually that means a lot of human supervision and a limited amount of unsupervised mechanism to try and uh, facilitate the labeling process because it can be quite time consuming. This is a big challenge. Then the seventh step is, or seventh challenge is interpretability and explainability. What does that mean? Here, there are several layers and the model will make a lot of complex computation to, to, to to then find the optimal uh, parameters for performing a specific task. Which means that it's usually, with this kind of models, pretty hard to understand exactly the rules or the, 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 the logics behind how the models works. And this is something that you will find a lot whenever you deal with an artificial neural network. There are some work in deep learning explainability, explainability AI, which is very uh, interesting. And finally, the eighth, eighth challenge is performances and stability. You want to have the best performances for your model on a specific task or multiple tasks, and you also want stability, which means that either during your training or in France or both, you want your model to perform in a smart and robust way. And for the training, it means that you do not want to have per epoch, so it trains in loops in epochs, per loop, per epoch. You don't want to have something, oh, very good performances, very poor performances, very good performances, very poor performances. This is uh, the extreme case, but that happens. And on the case of inference, what you aim at having is really something that can generalize well. So making sure that you prepare your data in a way to really represent what you will want after as real world application. Remember here, we are not looking for something as an academic perspective or research perspective to build um, something out of nowhere. We want to solve real world pragmatic problems. So that's why we need to make sure that all of these challenges are encompassed whenever we solve the problem at hand. It's very good to have this eight point. It's not a lot. I will give you a list of this point down below for you to have as a reminder, and it will guide you through the full course and beyond that to make sure that whenever you build something, it will be uh, rightly addressing all of these challenges. All right, so what is the action? The action is to uh, experience pain. <laughs> yes, I'm a bit sadistic here, but I think if you never, um, if you never label the point cloud, for example, a 3D point cloud, this may seem a bit abstract, especially the, the part of lack of annotated data set and this uh, data annotation, because labeling, giving a label per, per point is not so straightforward. So for that, the action is to label your point cloud. You take any strategy you want, you can explore the web to find the tools at your disposal that can do that for you. You will see that you have some outsourcing services that can do that for you, or you can just use Cloud Compare again to label your point cloud either fully manually or exploring a bit the uh, tools that are there. If you want really to have an idea about how to do that in a performance oriented way, you have the course point cloud processor that exactly show you an optimized uh, semi-supervised pipeline to do just that, right? But it's very important to be able to label, to see how it works, where you put the labels, things like this, before moving on to the next stage. Because you will have experience pain, you will know what, um, what takes a lot of time, a lot of effort before diving heads on to, all right, if this problem, supervised learning, deep learning, done. And the other thing is model building, but here it's a bit early to do that, so we'll do that just after, and you will also experience that. It will not be painful, it will be fun. This, this is a bit painful, but uh, I mean, you can always find uh, enjoyable elements in every activity. Let's think it this way, you give some colors to some points and then after you have an artistic point cloud, which is super nice, and you can share that uh, wherever you like. All right, that's it for this session. It was mostly to make sure you have this 
a great overview about what challenges, what is the context and scope in which we evolve and when we need to be careful about whenever we attack a real-world application. All right, let's see each other in the next episode.